Hi. Hope you're doing well. It's pretty hot here. Heat dome. Heat Dome 2024. That's who I'm voting for president, by the way. Heat Dome 2024. Put it on your ballot, bitches. So I'm going to talk about a couple of new and newish things. This is a record I bought recently, and it came out, I think it came out last year, but I missed it. And I'm going to talk about it. Most of the stuff I'm going to talk about are movies, though, and I'm just going to talk about a few things. This will be a relatively short video, but I picked this up just because I thought it has a, it has a, I think it has a fun cover and definitely has a fun track listing. And it's this Circle Loco Records. Um, it doesn't really have a title anyway. Now, if you were to look at this cover, what kind of music do you think it would be? I mean, you'd think it was like Insane Clown Posse or something, right? You'd think it was like ICP, motherfucker. Yeah. You'd think it would be some juggalo bullshit. But it is not some juggalo bullshit. I mean, it could be if you really wanted it to be and you wanted to stretch your imagination and pretend. It could be, but it's not. You'll, you, some of you might recognize this. This is Rockstar, and they are a video game company. And they, they put this release out in tandem, in partnership with Circo Loco. Never heard of that. I've definitely heard of Rockstar. Rockstar has produced games like Grand Theft Auto and Red Dead Redemption and some others. But those are their two big franchises. I thought it was interesting, too. Uh, this guy, one of the, I think he's like the senior VP of Human Resources or something. I'm not going to name his name, but. He's bought a number of records from me over the years. He buys, he always buys great shit too. So I'm, I'm, I wonder if he had something to do with this release. Because what you find on here is some really fantastic techno music. And I will show those names. Sorry for the glare. I still have my shrink on it. I'll just read it. You get the Ghostbusters, which I think, I'm not entirely sure who that is actually. Let me see. Oh, yeah, Konstantin Kunst. That is a dude from Ketten Carussel from Giggling. And I love me some Giggling. I've mentioned Giggling before. They are a German label, kind of a mysterious label that just puts out great shit. They put out a lot of electronic stuff. That's all it is. It's techno, it's house, it's ambient, it's experimental. And he is part of a group called Ketten Carussel, which, who are awesome i love those guys you also you also get Audi. i eddie Audi. i'm sorry if i'm mispronouncing that another techno guy i have a couple of releases for him from him his stuff is always good he's got that minimal kind of that minimal romanian vibe going on and then you get edward and if you don't know edward where where have you been I don't think there's been an electronic music compilation released in the last decade that Edward is not on. This guy is everywhere. <laughs> He's one of those hit and miss guys with me. Like sometimes his stuff is really good and other times his stuff is just really fucking boring. I just think it's too much. Edward puts out, puts out a lot of music and I, I think it's just an opinion, but in my opinion, Edward should tone it down a little bit. He's, he doesn't need to be on every fucking compilation that's ever been produced. I guess if he gets asked, I mean, why wouldn't he? But I get, I get a little tired of Edward after a while. I, every, time, every time there's a comp, there he is. But the, the real magic on this are these two names on the C and the D sides. Leofar Lagav, Raphael Vogel. This dude is the shit, in my opinion. And then Map Ache, Map Ash. I don't know how you say that. It probably doesn't make any difference. Again... Two other giggling artists. I love Map Ache, Map Ash. Sorry, I'm going to say Map Ache because that's what it looks like in English. Map Ache. This guy, he, I like him a little better than Edward. He is one of those guys that I don't always love what he does. But he's also one of those guys that every time he puts out an album, I buy it on day one. I have to hear it. I want to hear it. I want it in my life. 
This dude, though, is something special. Everything that Lagav does is amazing. He is the tent pole artist on the Giggling record label. It used to be Trom Prince, and Trom Prince is gone now. You'll know Trom Prince as DJ Metatron, uh, DJ Healer. Trom, Trom Prince, maybe I should do a video on him. He's an interesting guy. He, uh, he, he produces amazing music. I also think he thinks very highly of himself. I actually have a personal experience with him, and I think Trom Prince is a brilliant artist. He's also a little arrogant. I think he believes a lot of his hype. But it doesn't matter because his music is so good. I mean, a lot of times, brilliant genius artists are complete assholes. <laughs> you know, they, they are, uh, <laughs> they're not mutually exclusive, let me put it that way. And that is the case in Trom Prince's case. In my experience with him, he's a bit of a douche. But his music is so brilliant, it doesn't make any difference. This guy is the real star of the label, though. And again, that's an opinion. But if you don't know this guy, Leif Farlagov, his real name's Raphael Vogel. Just reverse this. Reverse these two names. This guy's something special. Premier electronic music producer in our world today. I don't think they come any better than this, this man. Anyway, I saw this. This came out last year, maybe even the year before, and I totally missed it. But I was, uh, I think I was just searching for Leifar Lagav tracks, and I noticed that he had put a track out on a compilation. And when I clicked on it, it was this. So this is excellent, man. Just really deep, soulful house and techno. Awesome. The, the, the lineup of artists on here is unstoppable. There's some serious talent on this double pack. And don't let this cover turn you off. I, I know when you look at this cover, you wouldn't expect this to be like a very lush, beautiful, deep house and techno album. You might think the opposite, but it is. It's a really good release. By the way, grown adults being afraid of clowns, really? I, I don't know. I don't get this. Are people still afraid of clowns? I, guys, men and women, this is just some angry dude with a bunch of makeup on. You know that, right? They're just trying to hide from their anger. I, I've, never, I've never quite understood the fear of clowns. I don't get that. <laughs> I just see clowns as being sad, pathetic old bastards who are trying to hide their true selves. I mean, if you're looking, if you're scared of that, how are you not scared of half of Hollywood? People like Will Smith. I mean, those people spend their entire lives trying to cover, trying to cover up the scumbag, aggressive, asshole bastards that they are. I mean, I don't think this is any different. You know, one gets paid millions of dollars to be in really shitty movies, like someone like Will Smith, and then another one gets paid nothing to dress like this. But the essential message is the same. What am I talking about? I have no idea. But... I do want to talk about that record because I love it. Now, let's talk about some movies quickly, and I will fuck off. And, uh, ooh, sorry, sorry for the, oops. This mic is so weird. It, 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 it clip, it's, it's supposed to clip on, but it only clips in a certain way, and, and I, that's not, yeah, that doesn't bother you, right? Me tapping on a, repetitively tapping on a microphone. I got a couple of new releases here. And I got something that's been out for a while. These all came today, so I, I wanted to talk about them. Child's Play. This is a series that I don't really like, honestly. I've never really been into it. But the first Child's Play is really cool. The Tom Holland one. Yeah. This is a fun movie. It's well done. It's by Tom Holland, who, who directed some very, very good horror movies in the 80s. He did Fright Night. He wrote and directed Fright Night with Chris Sarandon, and I think that's one of the best horror movies of the 80s. Fright Night is a fantastic mix of humor and horror that they just can't do anymore. I think they try to do it now, but it's... Horror movies are just so bad now, I think. They're, they're so busy trying to be multiple things, but they don't end up doing any of those things very well. And the art suffers for it. Tom Holland was able to strike that balance really well in the 80s with Fright Night. 
And he carried that through. I think he made another movie. God, what was the name of the movie? I think he made a movie with Whoopi Goldberg after Fright Night. I don't think Child's Play came out right after Fright Night. I think he did Fright Night and then some Whoopi Goldberg movie. I can't even remember the title of it. Someone will know it and remind me. And then he did this. And I think Child's Play works in the same way that Fright, Fright Night works. It's actually kind of freaky, but it's funny. It's like American Werewolf in London and that. I'm not saying this is as good as that. American Werewolf in London is the pinnacle of frightening horror and really funny comedy being mixed together perfectly, seamlessly. But Child's Play and Fright Night are movies that do it really well. The rest of these Child Play movies, I don't get, man. I, I saw... I think I saw the Ch Child's Play 2 and 3, and they were absolute shit. I get why it's a franchise. I get why people love it. It's just goofy fun. But I don't know. They're, I think they're dumb. They're not well made. I don't want to waste my time watching a movie that's not well made. I don't care how fun it is. <laughs> you know, This is well done. And you get Brad Dourif doing the voice of Chucky. Brad Dourif is, is, is he underrated? I think that he is. I think that he's one of the greatest character actors that has ever lived. He is a phenomenal actor. I love Brad Dourif from Billy Bibbit all the way up through Chucky, all the way up through Worm Tongue, you name it. What a fucking actor this guy is. And he's still around and he's still brilliant. And he does the voice of Chucky. I don't know how many of you actually knew that, but he does. And he's the best part of the movie. Brad Dourif, man. What a super talent. And this is loaded with stuff. I love these kinds of releases. It's, it's on 4K, obviously, but it's loaded with bonus features. Anyway, I never picked this up. I thought it was time. I've never been a big fan of Chucky. Um, I prefer John Gruden as Chucky over Chucky being Chucky. John Gruden is a much better life-like True to life, Chucky, I think. And if you don't know who John Gruden is, go look him up. I'm not going to break into that. But this is a cool movie. It's funny. It's scary. It's a good mix. It's good. It's not perfect, but it's good. I thought it was time to get that. This next one is an old movie that just got released on Blu-ray. And if you've never seen Cat Baloo, you need to see this. This is, in my opinion, one of the best westerns ever made. It's a comedy, but it's also a very well done western. The cast is amazing. The direction's good. And this movie came out in 1965, I want to say. Actually, let me look here. 65, right? 65? Where are you, 1965? Yeah, 1965. So, yeah, it's been out for what, 50, shit, almost 60 years, 59 years? Fantastic movie. I don't think it's ever been released in any format above a Blu-ray. I think it was DVD only, to my knowledge. Maybe another Blu-ray came out. I'm not sure, but they just re-released this on this Blu-ray. Fantastic cast. Lee Marvin plays two different roles in this. In fact, I think he won an Oscar for his performance in this. This is one of those movies I don't think a lot of people have seen, but it was popular in its day. It won Academy Awards, and it's a really good movie. And the main draw, right here, Jane Fonda. Prime Jane Fonda. 60s Jane Fonda. I have mumbled and drooled about John Jane Fonda in the past. Those of you who watch all of my videos, you know how I feel about Jane Fonda. She does very strange things to me as a man. I watch her and uh, um, I, I feel things in certain areas of my body when I look at 60s era Jane Fonda. I mean, in my opinion, 60s Jane Fonda is the finest looking human being that has ever walked the face of this earth. It's just not fair that humans look as good as Jane Fonda did in the 60s. She still looks good, don't get me wrong. The woman's, what, 85, 90 years old? She still looks good. But 60s Jane Fonda? Get the fuck out of here. I, uh, I don't care what she's in. I mean, I, I shouldn't say that. I do care what she's in. Like, you know, if I could watch any 60s movie with Jane Fonda. I, I wouldn't say I would just watch any 60s Jane Fonda movie. If I only had one to live with, it would be Barbarella. 
and you know why. People, you know why. Don't pretend you don't know why. Jane Fonda is the finest looking human being that's ever walked this earth, and it's not fair. And that's all I have to say. If you want to see Jane Fonda at her very, very extremely hottest point in her career, wearing cowboy gear, look no further. You can turn the sound down and watch this movie. Jane Fonda is still dressed up like a cowboy in 1965. Do you need to hear anything? Turn the sound down, pull your pants off, and have at it. That's all I had to say. Cat Baloo, fucking great movie. I'm happy to have that. And one last movie I will talk about. I haven't even opened any of these. This Maybe I should have. This is kind of like a bomb-ass box release. But American Gigolo. That's right. Old Dicky Gear getting his dick out. American Gigolo. Now, do I like Richard Gear? Come on, no. I think he's a bore. But if there's any movie that you're going to watch Richard Gear in, it's American Gigolo. Why? Because of Paul Schrader. Paul Schrader did this movie. You know who Paul Schrader is. I hope you do. If you don't, you have homework to do. Paul Schrader is just one of those guys I have the deepest respect for. He's, he is an immensely talented writer. He is also a very good director. I don't think he's as good a director as he is a writer, but that's okay. His, his subject matter is so off the wall, so original, so different, so unique, that even his shortcomings as a director don't really hamper the entertainment of what he's written. The guy is a great writer. And I'm not going to I'm not going to list all of the great movies he's written, but he is a master screenwriter. He is a master storyteller, and this is one of his stories, American Gigolo. If you've never seen this, I highly recommend it. This is a really cool movie. This is where Richard Gere burst onto the scene. This is where everyone became aware of Richard Gere. This is what made him a household name, American Gigolo. And I don't remember the year this came out. I want to say 1980, but I feel like that's not right. As you know, I'm not always correct with years. Uh, I don't see a year on here. Late 70s, early 80s, this came out. Really cool movie. Interesting, intense. It's typical Paul Schrader type fare. I think a lot of people will be very uncomfortable watching this movie. I love those movies. I love un I love discomfort. I love being uncomfortable. Anyway, and this is in glorious HD 4K Dolby Vision goodness. I can't wait to bust this open. As I already mentioned, I, I'm planning on watch, watching Bound tomorrow with a friend of mine. It's my birthday tomorrow, and we're going to celebrate by watching Bound. But at some point in the near future, I'm going to revisit this. I haven't seen this in a long time. So at some point in the next week, I will be watching this. And I will be definitely watching this. And I will be watching Chucky. And you should too. Why not check these out? I hope you guys are surviving. I know it's hot as a motherfucker in this country right now. It's not so bad here in the Northwest. It is pretty warm here. But I know a lot of you are probably suffering through some serious heat waves. If you live in the Midwest or in the East Coast, you're probably getting hit pretty hard. So hang in there. I hope you guys are doing well. And I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.